have here is uh, EEG being recorded in two channels, and uh, we're recording from two separate individuals. What we have is both uh, volunteers are connected at CZ, which is the vertex lead on the top of the head for the active, and also each individual for the reference is using the left ear as a connection. So we have two channels, which are differential channels, each individual measuring from CZ to the left ear. We also have the ground for each individual on the right ear, and those grounds then are connected together at the jumper cable here, so that without being physically touching, they are in fact being both at the same ground potential. So to the instrumentation, this is no different than one individual, one brain with two active leads. This is a two-channel recording. Uh, we have Richard on the left, uh, Judith on the right. We're seeing the raw EEG on the top traces. And uh, for example, I will tap the CZ electrode on Richard's head. And uh, there we see that the top channel is agitated. And I will similarly tap Judith's and we see that the bottom sensor, the bottom recording, is agitated. The top one, too. Well, because I reached over, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I actually, and Richard also, <laughs> I played like a little bit. he nodded in order to let me reach over there. I, tips I guess Leonard could probably walk over there and give her a tap and you can see the, the channel, too. Please, please, just briefly, just so folks are clear that we have two separate channels. There we go. Channel two is the one that's agitated. So we're recording two separate channels of EEG, and the differential amplifiers are measuring then from CZ to the left ear, Richard on the top, Judith on the bottom of the live EEG traces. Do another quick demo, Richard. You'll please clench your teeth just momentarily. Again, the top trace shows beta activity. And Judith, please do the same, clench your teeth, and now you see then also on channel two, only that agitation. So we are recording separately right now. There's no crosstalk between the EEG signals due to how the equipment is configured. Okay, we're getting truly separate differential EEG from two individuals. Yes? Is there a preference for CZ over other sites in no. this? No. The question is, is there a preference for CZ over other sites? Only that my personal persuasion is, if you're going to do any kind of general work without any great bias, and you've got to pick a place, CZ is quite effective because it records well from both sides of the motor strip. If there is an alpha activity in the back, about 40% of it still shows up on CZ. So it's just a good place to be, but absolutely not. You could go PZ on each person to record occipital type of alpha waves. If you were doing alpha synchrony, you'd probably go back to PZ, if not OZ. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it was just a choice. Okay. Can you explain those bars on the right? I'm going to, right? Yes, I, the answer is yes, I can. And I will. First, let's explain the bars on the left. On the left, we have what we uh, call a, a brain mirror. Uh, it's a, something related to the mind mirror. This is a power spectrum. It is the amplitude of the EEG energy across the bands, the bands being theta, alpha, low beta, and in this case it is SMR because we're at CZ, and sensory motor rhythm. Beta, 16 to 20, high beta, 20 to 30. We have some extra higher beta stuff up there we can look at. The left trace is Richard, the person on the left. The right trace is Judith, the person on the right. And um, we see them waxing and waning and moving and doing things uh, individually, uh, dynamically. 
On the right, I happen to be showing a connectivity metric, which at this moment happens to be the spectral correlation coefficient. This is a statistical coefficient. Uh, this is the lexicore uh, uh, system developed by David Jaffe. This is the spectral correlation coefficient. And as I said earlier, it's not uncommon for it to be large, even in cases where the signals are not highly correlated. And it indicates that the shape of the spectrum is relatively similar left to right. So this is a measurement, a metric, telling us exactly how similar are these. Well, right now, you can see that they are reasonably similar. Um, they're, they're rather uh, typical, very, very typical. And uh, especially in, in uh, theta, alpha, and SMR, we're seeing that the, uh, they're quite uh, similar. Now, the, the spectral correlation does not require that the amplitudes be the same. It, they, you know, one side could be half the size of the other, but as long as the correlation is high between them, you're going to have a high number. So we're used to seeing pretty high numbers. The area where it's not so high happens to be in this beta, 20 to 30. Uh, the, more, the yellow one over there is the one that I see kind of falling backwards. And you can see visually also that there's a um, uh, emerging asymmetry between left and right. Now, one way to strengthen the Difference again. I'm going to ask Richard briefly, just very gently clench, a uh, jaw clench, so that now you come out, and uh, now you can see because the shape on the left is emerging more, some of these coefficients now are starting to squeeze in, get smaller. There's a smaller coefficient. Okay. Um, why don't we let both individuals go eyes closed? <clears throat> yeah, I noticed that, but that's okay. Um, do you, do, do you let, what do you typically do with alpha when you close your eyes, either one of you? I mean, obviously, typically people um, produce more alpha. Do you do that too? Okay. Well, go ahead and let's just do that for uh, illustrative. 